And welcome to our next edition of uh, Distilled Demographics. Uh, I was just looking through uh, the new edition of PRB's Population Handbook. And uh, for those of you who've watched some of these previous videos, you know, we've covered what the birth rate and the death rate, uh, a lot of the basic things. But the handbook also has a chapter in it on urbanization, which has really become a more important world issue year after year. Do you remember that uh, several years ago, the United Nations Population Division uh, estimated that half the world now, more than half the world, lived in urban areas and less than half in rural areas. Now, that's really a change when you think of the history of many, many of our countries, that such a big social change could take place. Uh, take a look at a couple of these uh, of graphs we have. And, these show the uh, projections of urban and rural population. So the first one is for developing countries, Africa, Asia, Latin America, and the dark area is the urban population. Uh, there's a little star there to help you locate uh, this year. As you can see, in about, oh, 10 some years, the, the rural population of the developing countries is actually going to decline. It's not going to grow slower, it's going to decline. And in the next graph, well, we have a big difference in population size, but we can also see that in the developed countries that uh, the rural population has been in decline, oh, geez, more than 20 years now it is. So uh, we are slowly but surely becoming an urban population. And, you know, urbanization has always been a favorite uh, topic of the media. Uh, but I, we know from phone calls that we get here at PRB, at Population Reference Bureau, that um, people quite understand, uh, understandably get the idea that uh, more than half of us now live in big cities. Uh, because after all, when we do see newspaper articles about urbanization, uh, they often have a picture of a, of a large city. As in this example, we can see urban housing, tall apartment buildings. So it's not hard to get that idea. But in reality, what is urban? And that is what we're going to look at for the next few minutes. Now let's have a little fun. Here's two pictures, and uh, here's the first one. Now have a look at this. Would you consider this particular place to be urban? OK, next one. How about this place? Is that place urban? If you said yes, both times, you would be right. If you said yes and no, that's totally understandable because the second picture doesn't really look like what most of us think as an urban area. So let's look at the way urban is defined. You know, it's actually more interesting than you might think. Uh, now, the, the uh, next uh, chart shows us some widely varying definitions of urban. This is what the countries themselves report to the United Nations. Now, the size of places that are considered urban varies, uh, as you can see on this chart, in both Norway and Iceland, from places of population of 200. The highest one I've ever seen is Japan, which has cities, also called Xi, with 50,000 or more population. Uh, others don't even actually have a population size, and you can see that for yourself. Uh, let's say, for example, um, Uruguay says cities. Well, we don't know actually what a city is until we dig in a little bit further. Uh, so I've always found that this particular list really surprises people uh, when they see it. Uh, in the next graph, we can see how uh, towns and villages and, and cities in India are distributed by size. Moving from the left over to the right, uh, that tallest bar, the one sticking up there, uh, is for villages of 2,000 2, to 4,999. Uh, now, the, the lowest criteria for an urban area in India is 5,000. So technically speaking, none of these places could qualify as urban. So we can see that the distribution uh, of, of towns and cities is heavily toward the smaller ones. Now we can look at another important aspect of urbanization, and one that's grown more and more important as the years have gone on. Uh, we've all heard the expression, uh, greater New York, uh, greater Mumbai. Maybe there's even greater Boise. I don't know. But 
What happened is, uh, in the 20th century, is that uh, many of us uh, moved out of the cities. We moved into the suburbs, and that, in fact, is where most of U.S. population growth has been. Uh, the city itself kind of declined a little bit as important, of importance as not only people but jobs moved out of cities. Now, take a look at this map of Texas. This shows the metropolitan areas in Texas, the, the kinds of things that we, the kinds of things we mean when we say like Greater Dallas or uh, Greater Lubbock, that type of thing. Getting pretty complicated, isn't it? If we were to have seen this map back in 1960, uh, there would be nowhere near as many of these uh, counties colored in. But what this shows you is how the city has spread out uh, into su the surrounding area, uh, often well beyond what anyone would have dreamed of. When I was a kid growing up in the New York City area, uh, we had this expression, of course, uh, the sticks. Uh, that meant people who lived out uh, kind of in the boondocks, if you will. Uh, now, I think that that particular idea has begun to wane quite a bit, especially with, you know, communications, uh, the fact that with cell phones, the fact we have cable television, people are not cut off anymore uh, the way they in many ways were. Uh, so I think that some of this definition about uh, urban and rural and metropolitan is beginning to fade away a little bit. And, you know, that's particularly true for smaller countries where you have, say, Western Germany. Uh, Western Germany, the former Western Germany, and I use it because they have most of the German population, uh, is the size of the U.S. state of Oregon has about 65 million people, uh, all living fairly close together with excellent rail transportation. You know, what does urban-rural mean in that particular case? Now, another thing to keep in mind here, and uh, the next uh, table, the next table shows uh, the tr traditional way in which metropolitan areas are defined. So the one on the top, Boston, notice that the city proper, and you know, that's the term we use for Boston and its government, uh, how small that is compared to its metropolitan area. Uh, oftentimes, especially in the Northeast, the original city can't get bigger. It can't uh, add territory, so it winds up fairly small. So, but here we can see that the concept of metropolitan area is not just only for very large cities. Even places like uh, Rochester, Minnesota now have suburban counties attached to it. And uh, so this has become a particularly important, I think, uh, way of looking at the way we live today. And finally, I think demographically, urban and rural differences uh, are, can be quite important for population growth. If we look at this uh, uh, final chart here, you can see the, uh, the great difference in the average number of children that women bear during their lifetime at today's rate. So this shows us the total fertility rate, and uh, we can see some pretty significant differences between urban and rural areas in all of these countries. Well, that kind of wraps it up for urbanization now for the moment. I, uh, but there's more to this, really. It's, this particular session was about urbanization and urban and rural and all of that. But I think some of the precautions about not jumping too quickly to interpret data, what they mean or what they might imply, but to step back a little bit a few, a few minutes and say, hey, wait a second, um, what actually is this thing measuring? Sometimes it isn't quite what we thought.